is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Field, exploding down the sideline. This is Hanging with the Boys, presented by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, and Shannon Gross. Happy post Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. Thank you for providing life and care and nurturement. We don't show you <laughs> enough. I just oh, made that work wow. out. What? what? Oh, my God. What? Hey, 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 fellas. You can, tell, you, can tell what, you can tell when a guy is new with a situation. And, you know, yeah. and, and, and see, we used to this. But, but Shadow, for the first time, got to really wake up and make a great effort to remember. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> okay. So, wait a minute. So, for the last three years on this show, Nate can pronounce any word any way he wants, and I screw yeah. one word up, and I say right. nurturement, and then y'all just dog pop. <laughs> that is not cool, man. Not cool. Uh, so you, uh, I love it. I love it. So, so you did, uh, you did uh, celebrate Mother's Day there, right, with your girl? I did. I don't think I did it the right way because I, I think I screwed <laughs> Hey, we never do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I, I started off, uh, I think, on the wrong foot, but I, I think I saved it. So I think I'm good. Think cool. I'm in good shape, so. Cool. Great. Mm. Hey, Jesse, let, Mama me ask Gross? Ra- let me ask Ray. Oh, yeah. What's Mother that? Gross. You Mama touch Gross. Face Mama Gross? Oh, yeah. I, I talk to her almost almost daily, a couple of times, usually a week. So I mean, a day. So, yeah. Talked to her first thing as soon as I got up. <laughs> called her. So I'm, I'm good. I covered all bases. So. Hey, Shadow, you just don't sound right, bro, because you, you, you act like, okay, yeah, I talk to her twice a day, every day. It's Mother's Day every day. <laughs> you don't sound right, man. <laughs> but, Jesse, how your mother doing? She's doing well, man. Everybody's doing well, man. Uh, it was a great Mother's Day for the Hollies, and uh, we just we just kicked it and chilled. Nothing yeah, I caught, her, I caught up with mine yesterday. We couldn't get away. Uh, <laughs> Happy Mother's her, Day. Bang, bang, baby. Give her a special Mother's Day gift. Nasty Nate came out on Mother's Day yesterday. I ain't mad at you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Heard how yours doing, babe. You buy like five Good. gifts for your wife for Mother's Day? No, no. Like you, like you I probably didn't do it totally right. But uh, we had a good time. You know, it's all right. That's, That's good. good. It was good. nice. Good. Yeah. Chris no. Beam, you got to... Let Beam, Beam, you got to tell us about your situation, babe. Uh, you can't say none of you're not allowed. Okay, all right. He just, he just, we could just hear him, but no one else knows. <laughs> hey, 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 Chris, Chris, hey, before we get started, Shannon, yeah. Chris bought the biggest three year old on air before y'all came on. Yeah. This baby had to be like seven foot tall, man. <laughs> like a Jolly Green Giant baby. <laughs> But anyway, I'm, I'm through. I'm going to be quiet the rest of the show. Hey, I'm, I'm broadcasting live from the SWBC Mortgage living room today. I changed locations. I got out of okay. here. I hear you, bro. Here. Look at that. I got a TV. I got a ceiling fan. You should have turned, you should have turned oh, the that. ceiling fan light on. Is it dark? Am I dark? Well, I'm dark on no, the you look good. So the live view, I'm good. So. Okay. Good. All All right. Right. How you guys doing? What? Okay. We had some more football news late last yes. week since the last show. We've had, a, you know what? There's been a few things come out the last couple of days that we're going to get into. Demarcus Lawrence had some comments. Uh, really? Kirk, Kirk Cousins had some comments. Um, the schedule came out last week. Alden Smith meet with the commissioner. There's all kind of stuff going on that I want to get to. So where, where is Kirk, the row? We need the row because he still hasn't. Come <laughs> back. The role has not come back since he put out that those rankings last year. From the schedule we had last season, we still ain't the role. We looking for you, bro. Like you, know, he, you can't hide. We looking for you. Out, you got to. You got to come he, see us. He went out to L.A. to shoot uh, a music video right before all this stuff started, and I think he's been stuck out there ever since. 
You got to no, we got we got we got Zoom, we got WebEx, we got all you got to come see us, DeRoe. We you we need some answers from you. <laughs> and the dude and the dude with the twelve hundred kids. What's the dude with the twelve hundred kids? Country, Country Wayne. Country yeah. Wayne. Yeah. DeRoe, Omar Epps, Montel Jordan, y'all got to come see us. They probably yeah, don't know what's going on right now, so we could probably yeah. get them all. And maybe I shouldn't bring this up. The lady that's supposed to deliver the wings a month ago, I, I, sooner or later she gonna show up if Shannon let her. What's Shannon ain't letting her. Morgan? The wing lady. Megan. Remember Megan. the wings that we Megan. supposed to have a Megan. month ago? Megan. Megan, you got to come see us too. <laughs> Bring Dunkin' wings. Donut lady, you got to come see us too. <laughs> I'm drinking coffee without Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Oh, fellas. All right. I tell you what. Let's go to where you want to go first, Kurt. Schedule? Schedule, right, yeah. Let's hit the schedule. You'll do the schedule? All right. You got it sure. in front of you? I do. I do. I bet you we play the Rams first. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> now, and the reason, the now, prime time. Let me, let me explain why I'm being sarcastic real quick. Everybody hate the Cowboys, but you got a new stadium, and guess who everybody want to open up with? The Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, you want the biggest ratings, the biggest the biggest market. So if your fans don't show up, you know the Cowboy fans coming. So you have a full stadium. Look how they showed up for the Rams. No, they showing up for the Cowboys. <laughs> Dude, that, Thank that you. Stadium, with it, even though it's that new stadium, that thing's going to be 70% Cowboy fans going out there to that game. Ooh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, how you, how you want to do this? You just want to talk about each game as we go through them? Yeah, I don't know. If you, do you have overall thoughts on it? I mean, I, according to the CBS, uh, Cowboys have the easiest schedule in the NFC. Stop. Easiest. Stop. Based on last year's rank, you know. Well, you wins know that and changes. That, so. Going yeah, into yeah, the yeah. season, I mean, all that's going to change. Nobody's yeah. as good or as bad as everybody thinks they're going to be. Of course, yeah. But uh, the, right as of now, based on last year, the Cowboys have the easiest schedule. Jeez. And, uh, of course, the Redskins have the second easiest. Giants have the third easiest. The Eagles have the Why do you go there so. like that, Kurt? Why do you go there? Jesse, why do he go there? Beard, why do he go there, man? The easiest. Why it can't be an NFL schedule? It's an NFL schedule. And it starts at the Rams. So we got I'm the Rams. Glad, I'm glad they didn't open up against the Giants again. This would have been like the 12th year in a row they would have opened against the Giants. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they would have. NFL did it smart, where they uh, there's no division rival division games in the first four weeks. So if things get delayed or there's some screw screw around with the you know the COVID and the, the schedule, then uh, at least they'll get the, the the rival games in later. But uh, yeah, no division games through the first four weeks. So who we got? But it starts Rams, starts at the Rams. They were home against the Falcons, uh, who have Todd Gurley now and, and all that. So um, then at Seattle. So two of your first three games, pretty tough. Then a three-game home stretch. You got the Browns, the Giants, and the Cardinals all at home. So you'd like to think those are three wins there. Then go ahead, old Kurt. I'm loving you. One, two, three, four. Then over the next five weeks, and this counts the bye. But over the next five weeks, you have one home game. So you're at the Redskins, mm-hmm. at the Eagles, home against the Steelers. Then you have your bye week. Then you're at Minnesota. Here, here's a big deal to, to me, and I want to get y'all's thoughts, especially you, Jesse. You Jesse. Got an, Jesse, Jesse. You got an extra preseason game if, if preseason goes on like it's scheduled because you're in the Hall of Fame game. So you got the Hall of Fame game, then you got your four preseason game, and then we don't have to buy till what week? Ten, Kurt? Is that right? Uh, two, three, four. Yeah, ten. Week ten. Week ten. That's a lot of football with a very – maybe an abbreviated preseason, maybe an abbreviated um, training program in the off season. It's a lot of football before you get rested. Is it – with the way things are playing out and people not being able to be in the buildings and having to train on their own, is that a good thing that you're by? Is that late in the year or is that a bad thing because – they're going to be so beat up, and I think they're coming off the Pittsburgh game. Is that right, Kurt? Going to that's right. Week? Yeah, Pittsburgh's home game against beat, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's going to beat the hell out of you on the field, so you know you're going to get banged up in that game. What are y'all's thoughts on the bye being that late in the season? Um, I think it's good for this particular team. 
um, coming out the gates, you, you hopefully that this team is playing at a high level, um, that things are kind of in sync, and they get enough wins uh, that heading into that bye. Because we always have this stretch, and it's, it's, it's three games in 11 days. And I, I looked at I looked at that November, I think it's like November 1st to December 3rd or something like that. Like there's there's a stretch in there where they're playing some really really good teams. And yep. that that break, you know, in week ten, it can sometimes be really helpful, man. It gives you a chance to kind of just get away from football for a second, heal up, recover, and then finish out that tail end of the season where, where it's gonna it's for the Cowboys always comes down to you know what will make or break our season. It's going to be that stretch, that that week or two before Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, and that week after. That always kind of makes or breaks that season, and it, and it gives you that leverage. Now, if you can get some rest before you head into that three games in 11 or 12 days or something like that, I think that bodes better for you and then, you know, finishing out strong in the season because you're going you're gonna to face some division opponents towards the end of the year. And I believe that you end at either the Giants or the, the, the Eagles at the end right. of the year. So you want to kind of have a semi-healthy uh, team and hopefully you have enough wins accumulated at that point in time where you can head into that late stretch of the season not having to need every single game but having enough games on your schedule getting some rest getting through that 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 brutal 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 thanksgiving stretch and finishing december strong and putting yourself in a position where you have the division won by the end of the sh- uh, by the end of the year or very close to yeah i, I agree with jesse uh, yeah, you know, go ahead on, Kurt. Go ahead on. No, well, I just agree that I, I know that's a long stretch. You got the, you know, five preseason games, nine games ahead of that. But Jesse's right. Those three games in 12 days, and you're at Minnesota, who's going to be tough. You're at Balt. You finish that at Baltimore, who's going to be tough. Have that break going into that. I think that's a huge, huge advantage. And then, you know, it also sets you up. You'll have another 10 day break going into your last four games, and. You know, you're at Cincinnati, who probably won't be that good, but still it's an away game. Then you're home against the 49ers, who will be tough. You're home against the Eagles, which that might be the division. You know, that might decide division right there. And then you're away to end the season, and it's at the Giants, which is never easy. So I, I think it sets up pretty nice for them as far as the rest needed and when they're going to get it. I think you just got to play football. I think you got to find your level of play extend it by 20% and hold on to it, regardless of where you're at. This has been the problem with the Dallas Cowboys. They have never been able to play at a certain level where other people have to reach them. It's always the Cowboys being inconsistent. If we play a, a losing team, we play down to them. We play a winning team, then we got to put – you have to you have to practice with a certain tempo and have a certain mindset, knowing that your offense is, is what's going to tote you until we find out how Coach Nolan is going to do what he's do, And you, your strength in those games is your offense versus Philly's defense, your offense versus uh, the Ravens' defense, even though they have a good offense too. You, you, it is no uh, reason why you should ever think, and, and I'm talking about from an overall point of view, that you should never think that, okay, we're going into the game and score 40 points. And how we get them and when we get them, we don't mind. But we're going to get 40 points, and our defense is going to hold them down to 32. That, that's just how you got to look at it. Uh, and that's just, you know, that, that easy schedule, Kurt, I, I tease you about it and all this. No, nah, you got to play. You got to come show the world what you made of and that your draft and through free agency that you and your new coaches, that you ready to set the world on fire. I ain't accepting nothing less, and I hope our fans aren't either. Kurt? Finish up yes. after the after, after the bye. What what do we finish up with? Well, that's that starts that tough stretch. You're at the Vikings, who will be good this year. Then you're home against the Redskins, which is kind of a, we've played them several times now here recently on Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Then you're at Baltimore. You get another nice ten day break, and then you're at Cincinnati. Then you finish up last three. You're home against the 49ers, home against the Eagles, and then you're at the Giants to end the year. So the Cincinnati game should be a game, and Jesse, you may agree or disagree. The Cincinnati game should be that game that's putting you on top. You fought a brutal schedule up to there. This Cincinnati game should be that game that said, "Okay, 
we either got a one or two game lead or we tied for the division lead. Right there. So those last three games, you'll know whether you're resting, how you got to play your players, or you know you got to put your foot on the pedal and go playoff bound. You know, that Cincinnati game should be a crucial game in setting you up where you need to go. That's just how I feel about it. Yeah, we talked about that last year where uh, um, I think Jesse kept saying that, you know, you didn't want it to come down to those last couple games because you never knew what was going to happen, and that's – that's essentially what they did. They stumbled around, then they needed those last few, and they didn't get them. What are your thoughts on the West Coast games being at the beginning of the year where that, those are long trips out there, long, usually really late nights getting back? That seems like that would be beneficial to have that earlier in the year when you got a little yep. bit more juice. You're starting off the season. It's not the grind of the season. hadn't hit you yet. Is there is there anything to – those West Coast games, you know, being more difficult because because of the travel and because of, you know, getting out there at a different time and then getting back super early the next morning? For me, it, it, it was always, it was never the coming back part. It was always the going and then the preparation leading up to the game because your, your time clock is just off, right? It, it's tough for you to go to sleep and then you have to wake up earlier than your body normally wakes up. Uh, and then you got to get things going usually, you know, um, a lot earlier. If you if you got that 12 noon game or that 3 o'clock game, uh, you got to get things going a little bit early. But it's definitely much more beneficial that you have it early in the beginning of the season because, like you just mentioned, your body is fresher, your mind is fresher, football is still fun, the, gr- the grind and the grueling uh, parts of football hasn't really hit you just yet. Um, the fact that we probably aren't having any offseason uh, – that that means those preseason games are going to be super important um and then when you come into the you know beginning part of the year if you're winning if you're winning i'll say the third time if you're winning it makes those trips to and from a lot a lot easier to deal with and handle it's it's something about the energy and the momentum when you're winning that those bumps and bruises just don't hurt the same that 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 pain just isn't as uh harsh and all those things just doesn't hurt as much as when you can look up in the scoreboard and you know you're 4-0 or you're 3-0. But when you 1-2 and or you 0-3 or it's looking a little shaky, you 2-2, two and two, now those things that didn't hurt so much all of a sudden hurt a little bit more and you're dragging a little bit more. But it's definitely beneficial for the Cowboys to have those West Coast games, traveling time and all that kind of stuff early in the year when your body's much more fresh and football is much more fun. Nice the Rams shirt, are- by the way, Jesse. Nice shirt. Just you like my shirt? Where did you get that? Yeah, so I got to give a shout out. I got to give a shout out to Yellow Rose Creations. Uh, what is it? Liza, Liza Nicole. She made this shirt. I got another one too. I thought I was gonna put it on halfway through, but I, I, I'll just, I'll just bring it out and show you guys now. She hooked me up. I got, I'm, I got shirts for you guys coming as well. Um, but I got this one as well. This is for my boy CD Land. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> at, at. That's, that's, that's the CD Lamb at at. That means when you grab that phone, at at. So I got my at at CD Lamb shirt. I got my football horny shirt. So don't worry, I'll get. I got shirts for you guys as well. So once we once we get back together, uh, but yeah, Yellow Rose Creations. She made my shirt, man. Thank you. I might have to awesome. put these in put these in production so people might. If you know, if, if people if you like them, if you like the shirt, you want to put it in production. Let me know. I have these things made up, and I'll be selling them on my Twitter just, account. But yeah, hey, just leave just leave your Twitter handle off of them if you sell them to other people. Don't nobody want no other man's name on a shirt. Oh, but oh, but you want to put another man's jersey on your back? You don't want my name on the T-shirt. Fine. Oh, but you don't. You, 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 you want to you want to don someone else's name on your back, but you don't want my name on the front of of, of my. Don't story. nobody want. Don't nobody want the words horny and Jesse Holly on a shirt. <laughs> A lot of people want. A lot of people want that. A lot of people feel that when they see me and hear me and talk to me. I tell you right here. I hope the, uh, huh, y'all, y'all. I hope you say your shirts just, but the Rams, they don't went through some, some, some changes. Hey, see, I hate to say. I, I, I love we just having fun because now you done got me stuck on these Rams. These Rams are sorry. We should crush these folks, man. And, and I hate to even we start thinking about, about football. The, we thought the same thing about the Jets. And what yeah. happened? Don't, don't do that. Don't do that, man. <laughs> don't do that, Jesse. 
Uh, Don't do that, man. Out there on opening night, but new stadium, that ain't going to be easy. Oh, uh, uh, Kurt. How many games you got them winning, Kurt? I want to uh, know now. No, 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 I haven't no, done no, that no. yet. Don't go there. Don't go there yet. Don't go there yet. Because we already, we already, we already know your food. Somebody like already, a, somebody man. like they spending records or something. Don't go there. Don't go. What, what you say? <laughs> <laughs> Lord, gee. Somebody hey, as, as as players, do you like having like three home games in a row? Like last year, they never, you know, they went back and forth, home road, home road, home road. This year, they had these long stretches, three home games. You know, then I think uh, three or four at, on the road. You, would you rather? Have it that way, or would you rather be a little more spread out, as far as home and road? No man, it was different to me. No, big no, body I, bang I, anyway. I loved, I loved home <clears throat> games. I love when you had consecutive home games. You just got into your rhythm. You didn't have to travel. You didn't have to pack suits. You ate at your favorite restaurant. Slept in your bed. You know, your, your people came into town. It was much easier to control, much easier to handle. You knew the roads that you were driving. You were coming to and from. You know, all, all that kind of stuff. It's people try to say like it doesn't matter it definitely matters like it definitely matters when you have the, the, the comfort and the confines of your own home like nothing feels greater than coming home after a tough day's work and getting in your bed while we stayed in first class hotels with the cowboys it's nothing like being around your stuff having your things having your locker room driving your car eating at your restaurants, all that stuff, it means a lot to a player psychologically. Having your masseuse there, having the people that stretch you, your you know, your acupuncture, your chiropractor, all those things that you have, you have it right there at your disposal. And it means a lot. So if you can have those consecutive home games in a row, you definitely love those because it, it, it just it just leaves you at a level of comfort that you don't get when you go on the road. Your home games are great and I agree with everything Jesse's saying, but I'm gonna give it from another perspective. When you winning on a consecutive basis, the way we was when we started winning, it wasn't nothing like going into Philadelphia. It was nothing like going into Washington. It was nothing like going into the Giants and having the world hate you. We, our team used to engulf that. Now, when you're losing, we wanted all the home games we could get. And, you know, <laughs> There are certain yeah. road games that you get excited for. Like yeah, yeah. That you, you get a chance to go. Like, like when you talk about going to New York and going to Philadelphia, like that is fun because you know that the, the, the crowd is going to be Yes. Sick. It's going to be live, and you have that feeling. But, but to I'm Cincinnati? Sorry, it's, nah. It's, Cincinnati? Nah I, yeah, nah. I don't want to travel to Cincinnati. I don't <laughs> want to travel nah. to Tampa Bay. I don't want to travel to Jacksonville. Oh, I don't know about Tampa. Tampa. That's the home <laughs> front, Jess. Yeah, like, that's yeah, the home front. Wanna, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, but Cost me I, a lot I, don't, of I don't want to go to I don't want to go to Duval. Ain't nothing in Duval. I, you know, I didn't like going to Arizona. There's certain places uh, you're just like, nah, I don't want to go to those places. Uh, you know, either Green some, Bay in the winter. Right. There's some places you like, <laughs> you like, you know, like, ooh, we get to go to Kansas City, or we are we going to New Orleans? Oh, like, mother you know, days, baby. You know, Seattle's Seattle, one of those places. Seattle's one of those Seattle, places. Yeah. You get excited for those games because you know that the, the energy level and the crowd level is going to be. Bar none, and, one of the best that you see all year long. But you can come out of there places. with a victory. Uh, if you can come yeah. out of there with See, and I'm with you, man. Don't nobody Sir? want to go to Cleveland? Who wants to go to Cleveland? <laughs> I don't know, doing a plane to go to Cleveland in November? Nobody want to do that. Did. And then he got out of there as soon as he could. Yeah. <laughs> then when you're dealing, when you're dealing you, the mindset is different when you're dealing from a winning point of view. You know, like Jesse said, but when you're trying to build something, you need those home games. When you're trying to build a chemistry, you want them one or two weeks or them three weeks where you can get into a routine, a rhythm with your team. Everybody's at close uh, close in hand. And the way this thing is now, it looks like they're going to be uh, isolating the players and keeping them close to them anyway so you can build a better rhythm. So, uh, man, it, I, 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 man, what, we made a little, what, two games this year? One game? Maybe three. You're not yeah, picking them saying. undefeated. Say what? You're not going sixteen and zero. Yeah, you're not find, picking them undefeated. I just I find a way. Two years for you. I, it worked out fine. I, I, you think <laughs> I, I Mexico worked out for you this past year? Uh, yeah. Uh, nah. Mexico's canceled this year. Mexico's. Canceled Thank you. This year. That's because right, the Cowboys our, have a beautiful season. Season. Let's take our our first break. When we get back, uh, some numbers came out about Dak's contract over the weekend. It's kind of a, in line with what we expected. Kirk Cousins had some advice for Dak, and Demarcus Lawrence had some comments that we'll get into all of that and much more when we come back on Hanging with the Boys. The Cowboys way. 
where Thanksgiving means spending the day with 100,000 of your closest family and friends to watch the game live, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships show us what success looks like, where we're all defined by one single thing, the star, where we as fans have the power to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America. Copyright 2019, Bank of America Corporation. So, you're shopping, and that's when you see it. Aisle 23. Dr. Pepper stacked from top to bottom as far as the eye can see. The phrase too good to be true comes to mind, yet there it is. A rich, delicious Dr. Pepper paradise. Wait, did did that can of Dr. Pepper just open itself for you? They all are. As if to say, so nice to treat you. And even though it feels weird to talk to a can, you pick one up and say, it's so nice to be treated. Dr. Pepper. So nice to treat you. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay? What's not too... It's right above the subway! Well, I bet you don't even notice it after the... That's my neighbor, Angus! A deal that's just okay is not okay. Get a great deal with America's best network. Come into an AT&T store to find out how to get one of our popular smartphones for $0 down. Based on GWS1 score, September 2019. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride, too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson hats, the official crown of all self-respecting cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today in the Stadium Pro Shop or at Stetson.com. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Wingstop. Go to Wingstop.com now to get that undeniable deliciousness delivered right to your door and get you some of that nourish, nur, nurturement from them. Your choice of 11 mouth-watering <laughs> flavors like zesty lemon pepper, mango habanero, or spicy Korean Q, all available in mine and Kurt's favorite boneless because they're not messy and you don't get it on your face when you eat them on the show. Or classic, right. which is what seems to be what every pro athlete likes to eat because... I don't know. I guess it's got more nurturement in it. Wingstop, where flavor <laughs> gets its wings. All right, fellas. It came out over the weekend. I think we have it's no real news, but uh, Mike Fisher on the fan reported that the Cowboys offered Dak the highest contract in the NFL. Five years, $35 million with $106 million guaranteed, but Dak is wanting four years. What <clears throat> has been stuck at this, it seems like, for months and months and months and months. Is there, is there, can you break this stalemate? It seems like they're both really dug in. We've talked about it on the show before. Dax wanting the four years so he can get paid again. The teams want the stability of the five year contract, but they want to make him the highest paid person, highest paid person in football. Like, is this going to continue to go on through the season or should we just brace for, hey, it is what it is, and we're going in the season and just be prepared for that, or do you guys think they'll try to get something done before we get into camp? Or does it matter? Does it even matter? I think it matters. I think it matters in the sense of just the mindset of your quarterback. I, I, you know, you don't want to go into a season with your quarterback thinking about every little thing, does this lessen my value? You want them to go in or upset that you couldn't get what you thought your value was in a long-term contract. So I think, I, think it, I think it does because as people who are in the media, I'm not going to call me or anyone else. I've called Kurt a journalist. I'm not calling myself a journalist or a reporter. But what is the question we're going to continue to ask all throughout the year? Every good game we're going we're gonna to keep asking about, <clears throat> oh, oh, Dak had two 300-plus, you know, four touchdown games in a row. Did his value go up? Up, oh, Dak threw a four interception game. Did his value go down? So we're gonna we're gonna be asking the question all year long. He's gonna have to hear it. Jerry's gonna have to hear it. Steven's gonna have to hear it. His teammates are gonna have to hear it. We're gonna hit this contract talk will not stop until something is eventually done. So if it isn't done leading into the season, then it's a topic that's going to be a, a, a discussion piece every single week throughout the year. Um, but we all know. We've all seen it. We've all been a part of it. 
the closer we get to July 15th, I think the more and more you'll see a deal start to formulate and really come. You'll see the talks begin to pick up. You'll see the things going back and forth. And I, I just honestly believe in my heart of hearts that by July 15th, you will see a deal get done between Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. Let me, let me ask you this. As, as players, you know, Dak, he's going to make a ton of money. This, this deal that the Cowboys have already offered for five years how, I don't quite get – I mean, he's going to be a rich man no matter what. And if he's refusing to sign I, – I don't know. I guess I'm weighing the four-year versus the five-year. Yeah, he's thinking, you know, I'm going to make another big payday after that. But on the reverse side, I mean, football is such a – you never know what's going to happen. The, the next injury is the next snap, you know. I mean, isn't there some, let's get the biggest amount of money we can get right now, which is a five-year deal for the hundred and whatever million, instead of taking four years and less money? Well, here's the thing that we have to remember, right? Why, you can sit here and say, you know, why haven't we signed a deal yet? Well, I don't, I don't have to. I, I literally, like, they're not going to take their offer back. So I can sit here and just wait. And we can play this back and forth game, and then eventually I can come to it when we get to July 15th and go, you know what? Kurt's actually right. Let's not go in here and, 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 and hope and see, you know, and people want to use the Kirk Cousins situation. Kirk Cousins situation, I think, is a lot bit different than Dax. They weren't offering Kirk Cousins what they're offering Dak Prescott. You know, they, they weren't giving him that kind of money. So and they kept saying in Washington, oh, you got to prove it. You got to prove it. They're not saying Dak has to prove it anymore. They're just saying, we're going to pay you. We're going to make you one of the highest paid players in the NFL or the highest paid player in NFL history momentarily. So... You know, he's like, okay, that's on the that offers on the table, so I can play this back and forth game until we really get to business. That's why I said the closer we get to July fifteenth, I think you're going to see them start saying, okay, let's let's go ahead and do it because do you really want to go into the season? You know, while even thirty three million dollars, whatever that number is, it's still a boatload of money and it's all guaranteed. Thirty three and one hundred eight are completely two different numbers, and so I think once you get closer to to, to July fifteenth. You, you'll see you'll see sides start to understand let's go ahead and get all the money we can right now and then we'll come back maybe in at the end of year four and come back and say hey i want a new deal at the end of year four and threaten to hold out for year five whatever <laughs> man, wow that, that was that boy that was sweet jesse how you put all that together that's uh, what I do. That's what I do, Nate. That's why they. That's yeah, why they. Man. That's why they. That's why they pay me the ten dollars a show, baby. That's why they give me ten dollars a show. Baby. I, I love it when Nate. When Nate does not want to touch a topic, because you can tell yeah. he just does not want to talk about the contract stuff. He just like he's over it. He's yeah. like, let's just play football. Shannon, you know what's amazing about this situation, you guys, is you say he's a franchise quarterback. He say he want to be a cowboy. Uh, you you dragging this on. I don't like tags. You've tagged him. It's going to make 31.5 mil or whatever. Uh, like Kurt said, it's a lot of money. Like a lot of people said, a lot of money. And, uh, you know, and I, like I said, I don't want to get involved in that contract thing because July 15th will be here before you know it. I mean, we just stuck in our houses right now. But each week this thing is loosening up a little bit more, a little bit more. Before you know it, we may be back over at that uh, facility and people will start trickling in and maybe not, but uh, I, I just, I, on this one thing, I'm just going to wait and see because the only thing I knew for sure, and I told y'all this during the season, and me and Kurt got into it a little bit, his handsome is he looking right now. He wasn't looking at his handsome back then, but uh, <laughs> I, I told him they're going to tag it. And I think uh, Mr. Stephen Jones is a little bit more involved in this negotiation, a little bit more than he was with Zeke. I don't know if Big Dog, Mr. Jones, is going to take over and do what he normally do, but uh, when you talk talking about paying your quarterback, which you should a whole lot of money, you this one time you really, really have to take the cap into consideration. You have to project where it's going to be, what it's going to be about. And, uh, you know, will Dak help? Four years don't help. And they know that, and we know that. Five, six years help. Because you can spread that, truly spread that money out, but it doesn't do anything favorable for Dak and his camp. So Nate Newton has said all he's gonna say, and uh, thank you, Shannon. I love y'all. You're welcome. You're welcome. By the way, uh, tough day for Dak yesterday. I saw he posted on Instagram. I didn't realize it, but his 
I guess his older brother's uh, birthday was on Mother's Day. So mm -hmm. that broke my heart when I saw that, man. That's, that's tough. So tough. thinking about thinking about that, that's, that, yesterday had to be a tough day for him. So, um, Speaking of comments, Demarcus Lawrence came out and said uh, on Fox Sports 1, I think it all comes down to knowing who you are and focusing on what's in front of you. We had so many obstacles come our way and it kind of divided us as a team. We were worried about other things around us instead of sticking to our jobs and the coach. We didn't capitalize on the opportunities we had to win. What do y'all think he was talking about there? I know Nate's probably like, it doesn't matter, that was last year, let's move forward. But no, 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 Shannon. What he, he, what he said was the truth. What he said was the truth. That What he said, if he goes in and shows what he just said, if he walks that talk, now you're talking about being a winning team. You're talking about being a winning team. Yes. Well, I was a little, surp yes. I was yes. a little surprised he talked about <laughs> obstacles and the team being divided. I hadn't really heard that before. I mean, what was it the coaching, you know, all that? stuff with Garrett, was that what he was referring to, or is there something else going on? Uh, when you had the punt returns, you had a, a lot of miscommunication on certain things. Remember we used to hear about the little miscommunication with the special team. The linebackers weren't doing what they supposed to do. Uh, the secondary coach saying things to this guy. It was a lot of disconnect last year that we didn't bring to our fans because we, we got it on the inside scoop and it was something they didn't want out. Okay, but the bottom line is this right here. Great players and great teams face these, this same amount of adversity, if not more. But their primary focus is getting on the field, preparing at a high level. That's why I keep saying, you got to be the standard setter. Uh, when I played with Coach Johnson, when I played with uh, uh, the great Tom Landry, they believe in setting a level high, a high level of how you play. So if we play the Rams and we get ready to play the Rams, we up by 15 points going into the second quarter because they got to come get us. We ain't trying to figure out what they doing. They better figure out what we doing. Neither one of us have tape. So it comes down to who's the better player, who's got the most intensity. And so this team never matched. I never set the intensity with no team they played. They're playing a losing team. They play like losers. Uh, yeah, they score 30, 40 points in the fourth quarter. You know, but if they if they was playing against a great team, a team that was complete, coach, special teams, defense, offense, we lost. It's about setting your own standard. Jesse, what do you think he was talking about? Um, you brought up Mike Fisher earlier in this thing, and Mike Fisher had a term that he used a lot last year, and he said 52 brands. And that's what they had. They had 52 individuals, 53 individuals that was trying to promote their own brand. And promoting your own brand means I had to do things to stand out as an individual. Whether it was my wolf call, whether it was my sunglasses, my swiping, my, 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 my feed meat, whatever it was, it was everyone trying to, 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 to promote their self. And everybody was trying to be the guy. And instead of everybody saying, you know what, if I do my specific job that is set for me in this specific scheme, then we will all be successful. My coach in college, Roy Williams, used to always say, uh, if everyone did their job, uh, not every individual will get the, and not every individual will get an, uh, a reward, but we'll all get the award. And that's what it came down to. You know, everyone's going to get the award. If we're playing well, Everyone will get the award of saying we're national champions. Everyone will get the award of saying that we are, uh, you know, that, that, that we are uh, 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 NFL NFC Super Bowl East. champions, NFC Eve champions. And then other people will get the, their little rewards, but we'll all be able to say that we were that. Everyone was trying to get their own little thing popping off. And, and to Demarcus Lawrence, same thing, you know. 
He wanted to be the, the leader of the hot boys and they had chains and hats and t-shirts and hoodies and all that kind of stuff. And everybody was trying to have their own individual brand. And you know, that came into how they were playing the sport each and every week. It wasn't playing, it wasn't being played as a collective cohesive unit. It was playing, it was being played as 11 individuals on the field trying to do their own thing. And even though that we know football is 11 individual battles, it's 11 individual, ba individual battles in the grand scheme of what you're doing, not 11 individual battles of, of we doing our own damn thing. And it was a lot of we doing our own damn thing all across the board. And you saw, you saw the way that it played out. And we heard it time. How many times did we hear in the post game presser from Jason Garrett from, from others? Oh, execution, 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 execution. Well, wh why are we executing? H how is this not a thing? H how is this not possible that each and every week we're talking about the same thing over and over and over again? It's because you had a bunch of guys who were doing their own thing and wasn't executing the plan that was set forth. And to Jason Garrett's uh, uh, detriment, he wasn't the guy that enforced everyone go out there and do what they are assigned to do and execute it properly or there was some sort of repercussion to be had if you did not. There was no That's repercussion. It, okay. That's my question now because you, you've got essentially the same guys back and you, we've talked about how you can't coach want to or whatever. Is a new coach going to be able to change those players you know, and how they approach the game or their brand or you know, not focusing on the brand? I, yeah. I think so. I think so. I, th I think when you bring a coach in there who demands that you, th th there just wasn't enough demand from the people in charge. The head coach, or who, who, there wasn't enough demand. There wasn't enough saying, if you don't do what you're supposed to do and you consistently do your own thing, there's repercussion to pay. And, and we talked about it earlier. Guys would be able to just show up and all of a sudden just, hey, I'm good. I'm starting. I'm a play. Ain't nobody taking me off the field. Ain't nobody doing this and this and that to me. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing because there's no repercussion to whether I'm doing it wrong or it's not yielding success for what we're doing. I think with this new coaching staff, because there isn't, uh, um, there isn't a level of, I guess, so, ownership so to me, those yeah. players, you know, they're, they're going to come in and set their own tone and what they should follow. I, I believe I'm with you, Jess. Don't nobody know anybody. Uh, a standard has to be set. Uh, the co you know, and, you, and see, when you look a player in the eye, you say, "Hey, man, when we ask for this group, you don't stay out on the field. You 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 the first one running off the field because we want these type people in the game. We need this for this and this. And by no familiarity, if I'm saying that word right." The coaches don't know them. They don't know the coaches. So when the coaches say, you got to get off the field, you got to get off the field. Uh, if you didn't do something right, they're going to tell you, hey, man, you, you didn't do – well, this is what I – we didn't ask you what you saw. We asked you to execute what we need done on this field so we can stay together as one unit. Yeah. And a lot of that wasn't being done. And then we heard Coach Garrett say towards the end of last year when things had done hit the fan, like, we're going to take guys off the field that's not doing what we asked them to do. That should have been day one. And now you got to one, OTA guy. one, mini camp one, yeah. meeting one. That shouldn't yeah. have been week 14, 15 stuff. Thank you. And yeah, that should have been OTA one, mini camp one, meeting, voluntary workout one. <laughs> it, sh it should have been. And, and, and it wasn't. And guys knew it. Guys knew it. Guys knew. So they were just like, ah, whatever. They knew. They knew. There, there was a level of, he ain't going to be here next year anyway. He, you know, it, it, and it's it's so tough. It's so tough, and 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 you guys, Kurt, you know, and Nate, you know, it's so tough to when you have children, right? If if you don't if you don't incorporate a certain set of discipline early in their life, don't think when they become 15, 16 years old, all of a sudden now you're gonna say you can't talk to me like that. They're gonna say I've been talking like this for the last 15 years. All of a sudden now you want to tell me I can't talk to you like this, or I can't do this, or I can't do that. So. The same thing applies. Like, in the essence, this is the same way that you have to approach this thing. It has to be a level of discipline set day one that this is the standard. This is what is acceptable. This is what not. Uh, this is what is not acceptable. And when you don't move off that line, guys fall in line. But when you going back and forth and you allow this and you ain't allowing this, especially from the guys that are your stars, 
and you ain't you ain't you ain't expecting a level of discipline and a level of consistency from those guys, you lose everybody else that falls behind them because they're saying, look at these jokers. They ain't doing it. They can come late. They can come and do what they want. They don't have to execute the plan. But you want me to execute the plan? Nah. See, what bothers me is, you know, last year when they put the kid in, Pollard, he fumbled the ball, and they, oh, why Zeke wasn't in the game? Uh, that's because you're letting Zeke set his, own, set, set his own schedule. You don't let a player set his own schedule when it comes to uh, best players play, players that execute game plans play, players that do what they're supposed to do within the scheme play. And if that's your best player in crucial times, you know, you, you should have waved them back out there. You know, a lot of times our linebacker situation when guys thought they shouldn't be off the field, but you can't cover a guy in the slot. You can't cover this running back. You can't cover this tight end. Why are you still in the game getting beat up and burnt? Because, <laughs> you know, because you're a captain or because you this or because you that? that. That is not sound football. In today's football, Jets talk about a lot. In today's passing world of football, you need a hybrid guy. And people saying, well, you know, you, we just take for granted that our two linebackers can do it all. I, I don't see it the way everybody see it. And, and and I want to see how Coach Nolan and these set of coaches handle those passing situations, how they handle these rundown situations, how the schemes going to be. Now, I, I want to know because everybody ain't as solid as a rock as we, as we would like to think they are. Being athletic don't make you the best player all the time. Kurt, when we come back, I want to know you and Jesse's opinion. Should CD return punts or is he too valuable as a receiver? And then Nate and Jesse, I want to know what your favorite stadiums or road trips were when you played and what your least favorite were. When we come back for the final segment on Hang Out With The Boys. Planning your next family vacation? Make it Dreams Playa Mujeres Golf Resort and Spa. Enjoy the perks of unlimited luxury at this all-sweet beachfront haven where gourmet meals, premium drinks, and activities are all included. Only 10 minutes from downtown Cancun, Dreams is situated on a private white sand beach. Soak in the views from the infinity pool, pamper yourself at our spa, or enjoy family time at the Lazy River and Water Park. Book your stay today at Dreams Playa Mujeres by visiting dreamsresorts.com. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks. Free shipping! The Cowboys Way, where Thanksgiving means spending the day with 100,000 of your closest family and friends to watch the game live. Where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships show us what success looks like. Where we're all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans have the power to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America. Copyright 2019, Bank of America Corporation. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay? What's not too... Right above the subway! Well, I bet you don't even notice it after the... That's my neighbor, Angus. A deal that's just okay is not okay. Get a great deal with America's best network. Come into an AT&T store to find out how to get one of our popular smartphones for $0 down. Based on GWS1 score, September 2019. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Back here at the Cowboys, we can't wait to get back out on the field, and we know you can't wait to pack AT&T Stadium to cheer us on. When that time comes, SeatGeek is the place to get all of your Cowboys tickets, plus tickets to hundreds of games, concerts, rodeos, and other live events we'll be able to enjoy again soon. Every SeatGeek purchase is protected by a buyer guarantee, which means you'll get your money back if your event is canceled. Guaranteed. SeatGeek. Let's go. All right. Final segment. We've got about 10 minutes left in the show. Uh, let's go with Jesse and Nate. Jesse, start with you. What were your two favorite 
places to play or your favorite place to play and your least favorite place to play. And it can be for any reason back when you were in the league. My favorite place to play, I would say one was New Orleans. The, that, that crowd was... And, and the thing about New Orleans, it wasn't... See, Philly was a vicious, intense crowd. Like, that was a vicious. They were, they were, they were ugly. New Orleans is a party crowd. Mm-hmm. They're going to make noise. They're going to celebrate. They're going to dance. They're going to sing. It was a live atmosphere. Literally, from the time you woke up in New Orleans till you got on the plane to leave, they were going to be loud. And it uh, seems like was, we always play them at night, too. So you have that whole day for them whole to Whole day. Crunk yeah, so, and, and just wild. So, and then it's always a night game, it seems like. So New, New Orleans is definitely one. And then, for me, the worst... It's changed now. They're in Vegas now. But when I was playing, I hated going to Oakland. I hated playing the Raiders because they had that half baseball field. And, you know, you're running down on kickoff or on punt. And you're trying to run a route. And you're in that, you know, you're, you're, you're coming around first base. It, it was the, I hated, hated going to Oakland. And I hated playing on that half football field, half baseball field. Uh, playing against the Raiders, um, so I've never, I've never, um, I've never played in in Cleveland. I never played in Cleveland. I've I never been to 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 play in Cleveland. But New Orleans is my favorite, and the worst was um, the worst was Oakland for me. Did you like going uh, back up to like New York to go home? No, I hated it. <laughs> too many requests. Too way too many requests. Way <laughs> too many requests. So I, I hate it going to Philly. I hate going. To, I hate it going to play for the. You know, when we play the Jets, I hate it when we go to play the Giants. I hated it. Hated it. Hated it. And they always taxed you the most. Uh, them in California always tax you the most on your paychecks every time you went up there and played. So, and always, I, I would, yeah, I would spend close to five thousand dollars on tickets and then getting taxed out the wazoo. I, I hated it. It was always the worst for me. I've always heard for players who play in their hometown, it's not all it cracks up to be because you just there's so many people, you know, old friends and stuff that want stuff. So. Yep. <laughs> Nate, what about you? What was your favorite place to play and your least favorite? Uh, my favorite place to play was anywhere in the NFC East. Anywhere. Washington Old Stadium, uh, the Giants Stadium, uh, Philadelphia, and they old raggedy stadium. Uh, and I didn't like going out to the Cardinals as much when he when they were still in our uh, division. But man, any cold weather stadium at the end of the year, I don't care. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. I hate cold weather out there on an open football field. I hated Pittsburgh. it. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Uh, up there, uh, Green Bay. Uh, man, I hated it. Going to Philly at the end of the year. I, it's man, it's too cold. I hate. Didn't it. you tell us? Didn't you tell us a story about one time y'all got lost in Green Bay out in the parking lot or something, and somebody gave y'all some food? Was that? Did I make that up? No, 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 no. We didn't get lost. We knew where we was going. This <laughs> <laughs> was nice. Yeah, this thing was was awesome. Uh, they got the best. They like Jesse was saying with the New Orleans fans. Win, lose, or draw, man. They energized. And ready to go, man. And they they people that share and, and like to have a good time. But I'm telling you, any place we went in the winter, I mean, December, oh, my God, I hated it. You talking about somebody's dream for home field advantage in the playoffs was Nate Newton. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you get, what do you guys think about Kurt sent me a note and uh, kind of wanted to know what we thought about uh, CD returning punts. Kurt, what are your thoughts? Is he is – he, is he too valuable of an asset or, you know, obviously he's got that game-breaking type of talent. You know, they, they tried it with Dez some when he was here. Is the risk worth the possible reward or you think they should just keep him as a receiver? I don't, I, to me, I think you put your best guys back there. If he's the best guy to return punts, then I'd, I'd have him return a punch. I, I thought that with Dez too, but, um, you know, I know they wanted to protect him from the offense. I may be totally wrong. I mean, Jesse, you – you played a lot of special teams and know better, but I, to me, you get the best guy you can back there. The difference between the two is when, you know, remember, Dez broke his ankle returning the punt in Indianapolis. Right. Um, the difference between CD and a guy, you know, let's just use Dez for an example. Dez was the guy. 
right? Des was your number one guy. He was he was WR number one. CD is WR number three in a sense. You got Amari, you got Michael Gallup. So having CD go back to return punts, even if he gets hurt, you still didn't lose your number one or number two guy. And I'm not saying that anybody can just go in there and fill in the slot, but you can just, you can have a guy kind of come in and fill in that spot if he's not there. So if you can get him, and then you know also you're not taking Amari off the field. And you've got to love the way Michael Gallup has continued to progress. I don't know if you want to limit his snaps on the field. So if I got a guy in the first round, I want to be able to get him as many live game reps as possible. Keep him engaged. Keep him in the flow of the game. So throwing them back to the return punts, you know, and also putting them in an 11 personnel and 10 personnel, I think that just gives him a no, more opportunity to stay involved in the game, have a feel for the game, keep his rhythm, keep his enthusiasm, keep him uh, locked in mentally, physically. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it's an issue for him to, you know, go back there and return punts because everything that he gives you is a bonus and you can't live in a world of, well, if he gets hurt, the difference between Dez getting hurt and CeeDee Lamb getting hurt, Dez was your number one wide receiver. And so when you lost him, you lost a valuable asset uh, in the offense. If you lose CD, you still have two 1,000 yard receivers that can go and line up for you uh, week in and week out on the outside. My question would be, if he doesn't return putts the way this team's built now, who would? Who, who on the team would be has that experience? Would you have to keep a a fourth or fifth wide receiver that's your return specialist just as a you know special teams guy? Like, is there anybody else that's on this team that's ever returned punts before? I'm trying to think through the secondary and the and the receivers the way they are now. Maybe you go a little bit of a of, of digs and allow him to uh, to return some punts. He has some athleticism, former yeah, wide receiver. I, 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 awesome. You know what, fellas? Uh, you guys better go score some points. And you ain't brought in John Fossil to give him some eighth, uh, 20th best punt returner. The best punt returner, this CD Lamb. <laughs> get, 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 we, we, we keep acting as though we won 12 games last year. We have a new coaching staff that's required that people play and show their worth and value. And the old adage is, Jesse, you know this. The more you can do, the more value, valuable you become. Uh, you, like, like Jen said, you don't want to limit the snaps on this kid. I mean, uh, it's time to play, fellas. Mm -hmm. we, we, you know, if, if, if this was the Ravens, uh, 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 one of those teams, uh, the 49ers, you know, oh, man, do you really want to do that? And da-da-da, they looking for this great receiver. Come, bro, bro, this is Cowboys. What was our record last year? <laughs> Eight and eight. Okay, okay. Eight and eight that dictates today. that he play. <laughs> yeah, eight and eight hey. dictates that he play. Yeah. Punt return, kick hey. return, whatever. Hey Jesse, what did you think? Lamb posted a couple of videos of him practicing and running routes. What did you? Uh, what did you take from that? Oh, I, the, the the guy that he works out with, I follow. I followed him for years, so I've seen CD work with uh, the Footwork King for for years. Um, when I watch him run routes, this is how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. When I watch CD run routes. This is how I feel. This is how I feel. It took him seven CD run routes. This is how I feel. This is how I feel when I see the when I see hey, CD run routes. Yes, but, don't stand all the way up with that shirt on. Do not stay. I'm, stop right I almost knock, I almost I almost knocked my computer down when I stood up. <laughs> I almost knocked the whole thing down. It was it was knocked it over. But let me add one more thing. Let me add one more thing to that punt return thing. There's also a guy who they're going to try to get reps to as well, who won't be able to get reps because I think you're going to see a different box than he saw before. Um, Zeke will be getting a lot of reps this year. He's not going to have to face an eight, nine-man box. So people are always asking, what do you do with Tony Pollard? This is another guy that maybe you give him some you, – you give you, – I, I, I agree with Nate. Give Fossil as many of these athletes as you have. So whether it's kickoff or punt return, C.D. Lamb, uh, Tony Pollard, let these guys catch some punts, man, and see if they can't get themselves going in the punt return game. Because imagine having a top-tier guy like that returning punts for you. I, you know, it, I, I love when 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 we play, when I play, because how do Darren Wilson play play four special teams? How do uh, Moose Johnson play on all special teams? 
The only person that didn't play on special teams was Emmett, Mike, and Troy. Everybody else, they had to get it done. I'm like, we're acting like we got Hall of Famers walking around here, too valuable <laughs> to play special teams, and we wind up eight and eight. Then all of a sudden, I, I, I don't get it. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get on the same page. CD Lamb has not made his mark in the NFL. Have y'all? Has he posted a catch yet? I mean, I know he got y'all excited because he's running routes against Air, you know. But he ain't been jammed like a full grown man going jamming. Hey man, Jesse, you look all right, but you need to trim up the bottom of that beard. You got a few. Yeah, minutes. I know, man. I, I know. <laughs> you gotta get you tight. I know. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Gotta keep your chin down. <laughs> <laughs> we are out of time Nate thanks for bringing it as always Jeff <laughs> thanks for being here man Kurt thanks for being on the show Chris Bean where Kurt, Kurt went Kurt's going he dropped out I think the call wow was, he got disconnected so he, he doesn't get to say goodbye to everybody oh tear we'll be back next Monday same time same place happy birthday E. Hagen same happy birthday brother his birthday's Thursday happy brother man E. Hagen and, and Kurt had to use his wife's phone. Kurt got his, his fourth phone on this show. He had to use his, his, uh, his daughter's phone. Excuse me. That's a shame. He took his baby daughter's phone, muscled her, strong armed her. That's a shame, man. She probably came and took it back. That's why he dropped off That's the why. call. So. All right, fellas. We will see you next week, Monday, 11 o'clock. Thanks for hanging out with us. This has been Hanging with the Boys. Football hard, hard, eh? <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!